sins rate would be used to remeasure. So we are using now the temporal method. Okay. So at what amounts are we going to measure our monetary assets, our cash, accounts receivable, uh, bonds payable, monetary liability? So how do we measure this uh, monetary assets? Uh, Mr. Navarro, how do we measure, how do we translate cash, accounts receivable, and bonds payable? The fact that they are classified as monetary assets and liabilities. How do we measure them? Anybody? Ms. Palomar? How do we measure? Or what exchange rate would be used? So your answer is either current, simple average, weighted average or historical. I mentioned about cash, accounts receivable, and bonds payable. They are classified as monetary assets and liabilities. So what rate should apply? Ms. Ranzo, what rate should apply? What rate? Ah. Uh, Current or closing now. What rate? What currency exchange rate? Is it current, average, weighted average, or historical? Current, ma'am. Current, ma'am. Current, no? The three should be classified as current because, or should be translated using the current rate because. The three are monetary assets and liabilities. So correct, current for cash, accounts receivable, and uh, bonds payable. Okay, how about your inventory, your equipment, and then accumulated depreciation? Uh, these items are considered to be non-monetary assets. So how do we translate them? Ms. Rojo, how do we translate inventory, equipment, and accumulated depreciation of equipment? The fact that they are non-monetary assets. So how do we translate them? If the monetary assets and liabilities were translated at the current rates. How about these three, which are non-monetary uh, asset items? How do we translate them, Ms. Magpao? What do we use? In the, uh, Ms. Twando? How do we translate? Huh? How do we translate? What rate are we going to use? Ms. Pugon? Historical, ma'am. Ah? Huh? Historical, ma'am. Oh, historical. Uh, we use historical because they are non-monetary assets. So, kun monetary, current. Kun non-monetary, historical okay how do we translate common stock miss rosales temporal kita temporal temporal man o kon current amo mangyapon how do we translate common stock how do we translate common stock miss uh, santiago how do we translate common stock Historical. What rate do we use? Miss Tupas, how do we translate common stock? Miss uh, Pochano, hello, how do we translate common stock? Ah, 
Historical. Historical. Oh, historical. Ginagaya. Uh, despite your uh, uh, method use, no? Common stock is historical. And how about sales? Miss Noble, what rate should we use? Sales. Miss Noble, Miss uh, Nastor, how do we translate sales? Hello, Miss Plantig. How do we translate sales? Average. Uh, average rate, ma'am. Average method. Average rate. What, we have weighted average. Oh, dua eh, may simple, may weighted. So normally we use the weighted average. Weighted. No? Weighted. No, hindi kay simple, okay? So you hope you already got all the answers. Everybody, now we are uh, to end at 11.10. Uh, we start with problem number one now. So everybody, will you open to problem number one? This is a very long problem. And uh, I posted the solution in your canvas. So you have a very long solution. For problem number one, uh, let's try to consider the solution for the remaining time that we have. It's uh, usually to be to be uh, elaborated. How did we get the figures? Okay, so you now begin with the requirements. We are given the translation rates. On January 2, 20x4, the date of acquisition, the spot rate was 40. September 1, 20x4, it was 40.10. December 31, 20x4, it's 40.25. The average for the fourth quarter, 40.22. The average for the year is 40.20. In translating the income statement accounts, it is assumed that revenues were generated and expenses were incurred evenly during the year. So meaning from January to December. Also assume that the company uses the FIFO cost flow assumption and that the ending inventory was acquired during the last quarter. The following accounts based on the adjusted trial balance are given as follows. In U.S. dollars. So we have the sales, cost of goods sold, depreciation, other expenses, income tax, retained earnings uh, beginning. We have dividends declared in September 20x4. Then we have the assets, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, land, buildings, equipment. And the liabilities are accounts payable and short-term notes payable and bonds payable then we have the common stock and we have the paid in capital or the APIC of 360,000 now in requirement number one uh, prepare a schedule to compute the translation adjustment for the year assuming the subsidiaries functional currency is the US dollars. Functional currency is the local currency unit translation into the presentation currency. The current closing rate method is to be used. In number two is a temporal method and in number three translate the financial statements using the trial balance approach under the current and second is the temporal method. So let's now begin with uh, the data giving us the idea that the company was uh, started on January 2, 20X4. P Company, a Philippine-based company, acquired for $2,400,000 and on 80% interest in S company maintains its books in US dollars 
and they are in conformity with the app in the Philippines. Parents, functional, and presentation currency is the peso. As companies' financial statements are prepared in the local currency until the foreign currency unit dollars, the translation process uh, will be illustrated under two different assumptions. One, the U.S. dollars, the functional currency, and two, the Philippine peso is the functional currency. And we now have the exchange rates. And take note that the company uses the FIFO cost flow and that the uh, expenses and the revenue items were generated evenly during the year. So let's now begin with our solution for uh, assumption number one. We use the current rate method. Uh, translation into the uh, presentation currency with the current or the closing rate method. So we now use first the translation exchange rates. How do we translate sales, cost of goods sold, depreciation, other expenses, and then income tax expense? Remember that in question number one, we are using the current rate method. So with the current rate method, we now translate our revenue and expenses items by using the weighted average. And we are not using the average only for the fourth quarter, but the average for the year. Since as stated, all revenues and expenses were incurred evenly throughout the year. So we use 40.20 and it's mark letter A, meaning the average method. Okay? So using 40.20, we multiply the dollar amounts for sales, cost of goods sold, depreciation, other expenses, and income tax expense. We convert this to Philippine pesos by multiplying the dollar amounts by 40.20. So now we have these figures, sales of 145,684,800. And then we are going to deduct cost of goods sold, depreciation, other expenses, and the income tax. So the total of the four deductions, we deduct from sales, then we get the net income that will be forwarded to the retained earnings statement. Now, our retained earnings on January 1 is $576. And that's in number one, the rate on January 2, 20x4, which is the beginning of the year. The same is the rate for uh 20 uh beginning of the year no 20x4 that will be the rate for our beginning retained earnings so our beginning rate for the year 20x4 is 40. if you multiply five hundred seven six thousand dollars by 40 we get 23 million 40,000 pesos. And then we add the beginning balance of retained earnings to the net income during the period. Then we get the total of 39 million 103,920. And then we deduct the dividends were declared on September 1, 20x4, when the rate the exchange rate was 40.10. So again, we multiply 40.10 by 360,000 dollars. We get 14 million 436,000. And 
we have now your dividends declared deducted the ending balance on december 31 uh 20 x4 is 24000 million i mean 667920 this is your uh ending balance of retained earnings next we go to the balance sheet since we are using the current rate method the assets and the liabilities we do not need to classify them as to monetary or non-monetary uh, the thing is your assets and liabilities at the end of the period should be stated at their uh, closing rates or the spot rates so we have now your assets cash accounts receivable inventory land buildings and equipment and uh, of course we have to include accounts payable short-term notes payable and bonds payable all of these assets and liabilities should be translated by using the closing rate on december and uh, they are the spot rates so we now get the total of your assets 100 million 190 million 688 400 and then we have your current and long-term liabilities now we mark c meaning we are going to use the current or the spot rate the current rate the closing rate or the spot rate on december 31 20 x4 then we go to the common stock. The common stock is uh, to be recognized or to be translated by using the historical rate. The date of acquisition, the rate was at 40. So we have to use 40 for the common stock and for the paid in capital. We are going to use 40. Okay, so we now get your retained earnings from above. We now get 615,600 $615, that we have to carry forward. We now get the total of the assets equal to 4,737,000 six hundred dollars or one hundred ninety million six hundred eighty eight thousand four hundred pesos then we have now your uh the total of your uh liabilities and shareholders equity equal to uh four million seven hundred thirty seven thousand six hundred so we get the total of 190,200,420 whereas the total assets is 190,688,400 the balancing figure between the total assets and the total of the equities is 487,980 Four hundred eight seven thousand nine hundred eighty. Uh, that's the balancing figure, and the balancing figure, the assets exceeded the total of the liabilities and shareholders' equity. So we have now your foreign currency translation reserve gain uh, for a credit of four hundred. 87,980 so that makes our total uh, assets equal to the total liabilities and stockholders equity now for your uh, guide for the uh, letters we have now your uh, a average exchange rate h historical exchange rate then C, current exchange rate, 
and five there. Uh, BA becomes the balancing figure. Okay, so for that, we have now the amounts to be considered, uh, including your foreign currency translation reserve. Now, we go to your uh, retained earnings uh, and verification of the translation adjustment current closing rate method we are still on the functional currency method we have the translation exchange rate of 40 we have the reporting currency in pesos then we are given the net income for the year and we have your dividends declared now all of these are already included in our computations uh, above. Then we have your net assets using the translated amounts. You have your net asset position for the end of the year. And we are adding, we have your cumulative translation adjustment. Now a condensed uh, balance sheet. For S company as of January 2, 2004, was as follows. So we have now your monetary assets and the non monetary assets, as well as the monetary uh, liabilities and the uh, non monetary assets and liabilities. We have the statement of comprehensive income here given. Okay, we'll, we have a lot of figures to be uh, studied, though what is most important is the one above. Then in number two, we are now using the uh, temporal method. So take note, the temporal method, we have different rules to apply under the temporal method, be guided accordingly. How do we value assets? liabilities and shareholders equity and shareholders equity now take note i have been uh, discussing about the temporal method and about the uh, current rate method so i hope uh, you will study very well the solution you are already given the solution up to requirement number three so you have a very long solution for this uh, problem okay so for tomorrow your assignment will be to review to review the solution of problem number one which is already given in the canvas and uh, uh, as an added assignment, will you work on questions, multiple choice problems? Questions uh, 1 up to uh, number 98. So questions 1 up to number 98. And for the multiple choice theory, beginning with question number one up to number 78 for the multiple choice theory. So what you'll be doing, you review, uh, analyze well the solution of problem one, but you have to answer the multiple choice problems and theory. So by tomorrow, uh, we will deliberate on questions uh, where your answers are not the same as what I'm going to give you. So we will discuss them again, including the multiple choice theory. Okay, so is there any uh, question before? Make some boss, man. We end. Uh, for last month. yes i'll give you an exam based on this uh, chapter the exam will be 1 to 20 only theory 
So it's either multiple choice or troll false. So that will be our third uh, uh, exercise. Uh, so I hope you will study only chapter eight for uh, the theory part. Okay. So Thank any you. other questions before we end? Uh, put off kuna ang recording. By the way, the lectures uh, we had this morning, uh, I have recorded. So I will just forward this to the afternoon and evening classes. So uh, just uh, inform them.